Hello and welcome to the Outskirts of Faith podcast. My name is Elliot. This is the podcast for everyone, so you are very welcome. It's a conversation that's been going on for around 2,000 years, and the start of that conversation has been going back to the essence of the beginning of time. The essence of the beginning of time. Does that even make sense? I don't know, but I'm running with it. The Outskirts of Faith podcast is brought to you by Monkey Nut Audiobooks. Creating audiobooks, podcasts and voiceovers that keep people listening. So I'm really chuffed today and the reason why is because I've got a very, very good friend of mine in. He's uh, a lovely guy. We often do the school run together and uh, he's actually a business analyst. He's married with two beautiful children uh, who know my two beautiful children and his name is Graham Shanklin. Graham, you are very welcome here. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me onto your podcast. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, that's um, it's no problem at all. Actually, to be honest with you, talking to you, I, I kind of, I kind of just want to put my feet up. <laughs> I want to put my feet up and I'll put some slippers on or something. Like I've even crossed my leg because uh, we're just, you know, we're two mates having having a chat. It does feel like just a normal day, to be honest. Yeah. So, what what's um, your normal day looking like? You know, business analyst. What what? even is that i mean I, I tell you i saw some of your spreadsheets once and I, I i wanted to be sick because i was looked at it and i just got a headache my eyes were like what 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 do you actually do so i mean it, it's not that exciting it, it's analyzing business i suppose business analysts so um it will be asking people you know what do they want um requirements what do they need to be built so if you want a database what does it look like if you've got fields over here that need to be mapped over there um so it can be a little bit technical, but um, it's detail and yeah, I enjoy it. It's funny because uh, you say, oh, it's not very interesting, but all the people who need business analysts going, no, it's, it's really interesting. We need we need you. <laughs> we need you. I, I always imagine from the people looking out in going, oh, that, that's that's boring. But actually, it can, it's actually really interesting. It is. So in many ways, it's like it's problem solving. It's, 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 yeah. Am I right? It's like people come to you with a problem solving, or you have to work that out. You say, what is your problem that you've got? in your business, we need to try and find help you find a solution or build you a solution. For exactly. Yes, yeah. so you might have an old database or something that that's creaking and you need to have it rebuilt into a shiny new tool um, that works much faster, much better and slicker. Well, actually, how does the old one work? And can you tell me, so you have to pick it apart and and there's a lot of work to do there. So that's that's one of the things that it feels, it feels a little bit like actually having a relationship with God. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's like, you know, you, 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 you go to him with your <clears throat> your problems and your your worries like this is this is what's going on right now lord and uh and you know he's always, he's always listening which is lovely but then he'll sort of look down and and between you both working as a, in a partnership you get the solution yeah i think it's always good i mean work can be a challenge um and i think it's important to challenge our faith as well so always asking these important questions uh, and Things that that might we might find challenge us. Um, we need to we need to find that inscription and find find how that works for us. It's so nice hearing that. Yeah. It's so nice hearing that because I think that a lot of people, <clears throat> like if they're listening for like the first time on about faith or Christianity or they've got an interest in it, something that might be quite scary is like, oh well, well you know it has to be very very holy, and then you know <laughs> we have to where well, you'd have this great big cross and we have to worship it every time we walk past and we have to know all these hymns and but it's not like that is it it doesn't have to be like that it's different for everybody I, I yeah i think it's a common misconception that looking in from outside of a church and just looking in that everybody is or at least thinks they're perfect we're not there because we think we're perfect we're there because we know we are broken and yeah we know we need we need god and we need forgiveness and you and i you know i remember <clears throat> we go to the same church of course but the um before I, I started attending you went before me i remember us walking home like after dropping off the kids and we would have a chat mm. and we were very honest with each other and in many ways we were both just so are so incredibly lost all the time you yeah. know even even with our faith mm. with and i think that faith does that it kind of help you know in within christianity it helps you when you've got a relationship with God, relationship with Jesus, you can explore your imperfections. Yeah. And you're kind of almost like invited to do that. Um, would you agree with that? Yeah. I mean, when you come before God, you you just, 
you need to ask for that forgiveness. You need to put everything on the line. I mean, you can't hide anything from God anyway. So God knows you. So if there's anything that's troubling you, you need to offer that up um, and then work through that with God. Now, I know that um, the answer to this <laughs> question, the first question already, <laughs> um, <clears throat> and uh, but I'm going to ask you anyway, just to stick to format <clears throat> here. Okay. But have you ever found yourself on the outskirts of faith and what does that look like? Um, I would say yes. If I look at my life, probably for the most of my life, I've been, I, I've been a Christian on paper, and I was brought up as a Christian. What do you mean by that, Christian on paper? Uh, okay, so if you fill out a form that says, you know, are you a Christian? You know, white, black, etc. I would say, yep, Christian, tick. Okay, um, and I was brought up in sort of Anglican. Um, home, went to church, I sang um, as a choir boy. Um, I didn't actually go down into, you know, the Sunday school. So I feel like I, I missed out a bit there of the learnings. But so I would listen to the very complicated high church speak. I just went straight over my head as a child. So, so you, you, yeah, so it was quite high church. Now, yeah. <clears throat> just to explain the, I mean, how would you summarize high church? What what Because I think high church can be quite, scary I, th I think that if you're mm. if you want to step into uh, christianity you've got an interest in it you you think yeah i you know i do believe and i want to explore further i think the high church could be quite daunting mm. but perfect for christmas <laughs> <laughs> um I, I guess i'd compare it to the church i go to now um against the high church so the church i go to now is very it, uh, I would say both of them are right, and neither of them is is a wrong thing to do. Um, it's just a different way of approaching uh, Christ. And, and for me, the church I go to now is much uh, closer and uh, more friendly and approachable. And that sounds bad to a, to a high church, but um, well, no, no. I mean, high church is more traditional. I mean, yeah. And I, I'm always saying that there's <clears throat> one church. You know, if, if one church isn't right for you, then another one. Um, you know, would be, you know, go go and explore, go and go and search, go and find. I mean, at High Church, I don't know if they would do what we do, where, you know, every month we're sitting around big round tables with a croissant, a cake and a cup of coffee uh, during a Sunday service. Yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe. But yeah, I mean, for me, the High Church was, you know, lots of incense and a very, very big church, uh, much bigger than one we, we go to now. Mm, mm. Um, and yeah, an organ and, you know, a choir. Uh, and I'd sing as as a child. I'd sing um, in the pews, and I'd I'd be kneeling down, and you know the, the stalls come up to here above my, above my head, and <laughs> uh, just to give you a picture. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so I, I did love the singing though. I loved the sung worship. Even then, I loved the sung worship, and and, and you still do now. Something I, I still mm. love now. Um, it's one of my favorite kind of pastimes. Well, let's just stay on that, Graham. Mm. Why why is that? Because you know there is a lot of um singing praise mm. within within church so what is it that you gain because everyone loves singing everyone mm -hmm. like you know i always say everyone can sing whether it's in the shower or whatever you know but people pick a song and they, they sing at the top of their voices yeah. but when you're when you're singing worship music and just so you know that isn't all anyone listening to this you know you'll be if you're unfamiliar with worship music you'll be very surprised at the diverse range of it you know mm. where you've got gospel here you've got like traditional here then you've got bethel just rocking out with electric guitars over there what what did you gain from from that when you're singing i think it's a freedom to come to god um so that's that i mean worship song worship is how i how i worship and and that's how i find i'm right with god mm. if that makes any sense so the liturgy and 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 all the things that you say, I think, are all really good, and it, it's good to say things like the Lord's Prayer and, and and being right with God. But worship, I think, for me, through song worship, is just it's just another. It feels like another level. It's connecting with God. I think for me. And if you want to um, jump into the word worship and you haven't listened to it already or it hasn't been released yet, because I haven't actually decided which order we're putting these podcasts out, um, but uh, then listen to uh, Glenn Scrivener. Um, describe that in his episode of Outskirts of Faith as well. So you talk about the outskirts of faith. Where did you find yourself? <clears throat> yeah, um, on the outskirts. <clears throat> um, so, so yeah, I was born into a, a church family anyway, 
mm. church going. Um, and I always considered myself a Christian. And when anybody asked, I would say, yeah, I'm a Christian. Um, and, you know, my wife bought me a crucifix, which I always wear now. Go around your neck which, now. Which yeah. I've worn for, for many years. Uh, and, and I've always considered myself a Christian. Um, Can I tell you, mm. you're one of the reasons why I wear a crucifix around my neck. Really? Yeah. 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 I never told you this, have I? No. No, it's true. Because <clears throat> I've got the towel cross, as you know. Yeah. T um, a U, I want to say, uh, cross, um, which is like of, of a CC. As mm. you know, I got um, married. I won't go into too many details why, actually, on 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 the podcast. But um, I wore that, and that's I really felt, you know, connected having that. And then I always, when I saw you, I always saw that cross around your neck, and you know, when you come around the house and stuff. And I'm thinking. And I always looked, I was always drawn to it. And, I, and then one day I just thought, yeah, I want, I want to carry mm. that with me. I want to look in the mirror yeah. and say, yeah, there's, there's a reason why. And the other, the other necklace, because I wear two, mm-hmm. the other one, well, three if you carry the bead one, but the, 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 the uh, tail cross is the, I always did that for me, always ticked the box. Mm. But then I, when I was just, but you're the reason actually what, which started a flow of why I wear one now. Well, that's lovely. I, I think the reason I wear a cross is, a to i guess then anyway to remind myself mm. and, and just to 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 remind others as well um just to give that there as a, a visual display so two really interesting things you're saying so much i want to just jump on here graham it's really great um so one is to remind yourself so mm. is that remind yourself like the teachings of jesus how to be because it's very easy to say I want to take out the word Christian for a minute. Okay. I want to take out, because it's very easy to say how to be the best Christian I can be. Mm-hmm. All right. But that can be a little bit meh, isn't it? It could be a little bit, oh, you're <coughs> nice, you know, you're a nice <laughs> Christian. You know, it's it's actually about just being a decent human being, you know, following in the footsteps of Jesus, you know, mm. loving your neighbor and, and being there for each other, et cetera, and how you look at yourself as well. Mm. And knowing you're never alone when times mm. are tough. But I love what you said as well about reminding others and showing others and triggering a question. Yeah. Um, so I've told you that that did something for me, yeah. which is great. Um, but also that's the continuation of like the work of the apostles and 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 spreading the, the news of Jesus. Yeah, exactly. I think it's, it's, I mean, some people may say, oh, it's, there's no, I mean, there's no point in wearing a cross. What does it do? It's just a, it's just a necklace and, and Christ in, is in here. And, but actually, it, yeah, you're quite right. It's, it's part of, it's, spreading that that news that word that message and it's just like a visual you don't have to say anything it's just there yeah absolutely so it's, it's almost like um it's not like this cross has the power everything but no. it does have the power to trigger your your thoughts your heart your spirit yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly so can I carry on please so yeah so I, I guess i knew as a christian on paper that i knew how to act i was taught how to you know this is right this is wrong i was taught that and and i'll come on to that probably a bit later but um i always decided i was a christian because i was i guess i was brought up in that way but and i appreciated all the moral teachings that that brought through um but i never really i never really quite got it and when i went to university I, i thought well do I need to go to church? Um, I mean, it was always a bit of a struggle getting up early in the morning anyway. So <laughs> do, do I really want to? Uh, probably won't bother. No. Um, I'll go you Chris. do know we're talking about 10 o'clock in the morning here. <laughs> but I suppose back then that was pre-kids. It, it, yeah, no, that was that was earlier. That was the nine o'clock start, um, which again is not that early. But as a teenager, it was pretty, <laughs> pretty early. Um, so yeah, going to uni, no, I won't bother. Um, and yeah, still a still a Christian on paper tick because right, I carry right. all these morals and then I do all the right thing and I and I, and I follow the the teachings of Jesus, right? So that makes me a Christian, right? Mm. So and and that's how I felt. Um, and it wasn't until um, I guess when we had kids and yeah, my wife challenged me and she said, um, "You call yourself a Christian." but you don't even go to church. And I was thinking, well, I've got two kids as well, and I really want to bring them up in the Christian faith. Um, 
oh, okay, you've got me. I should really start going to church. I'm being a bit lazy. And it's a very, it's, it's a really great thing, to, I think, to be bringing up your children in the Christian faith, what they learn, what they, um, like the, the morals and being supported. And I always say I, I love the fact that you're in a community where parents want to listen to them, mm. hear what they have to say as well, which yeah. is great. Okay, carry on. So um, we found, my wife actually found the church, said, there's a church up the road, let's go. Um, so we all went one day together and this very small church, um, in Winchester, um, literally a handful of people, maybe 10 people okay, or less, you know, very small. Um, and I much preferred that intimate setting to what I, what we've described as a high church. Um, and there was this one day, um, I, I suppose it was a bit, a bit of a step by step, but so I was introduced to, oh, well, Graham, why don't you? read for us thinking read <laughs> what do you mean from the bible in front of everybody uh this feels a bit no um, i'm out, outside my comfort zone already um <laughs> but this this great guy um steve um who was there i don't know if he still goes to that church um said come on read, read. and he was always pushing me a bit what was it you know come come and play guitar so I, I can't play guitar but that is something now i'm learning to do i know you are because you've got one of my guitars in here. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so, yeah, started reading. And then this one day, um, it was one of these kind of open layout days where you've got tables and um, different activities, a bit like Messy Church. Mm. And um, this this one in particular was, um, could you write a prayer to Jesus? And I was like, well, okay, I'm way out of my comfort zone here because I'm fine doing all the right things. I'm fine saying the right things. Mm. Okay, I'm fine just reading for the Bible. Now I've got to engage with Jesus. You had to step up and actually play that, play that part. I had to put all my chips in and go, okay, I'm actually going to put my faith and my trust in you, which wow. I guess I hadn't done before. Wow. So all these years you considered yourself being a Christian and it was quite easy because you learned how to do the job. You learned how to... Like going to work, you, you turn up, you know what to switch on, you know how to log in, yeah. you know how to do this and the other. But then suddenly they're saying, well, actually, let's let's actually put your 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 spirit in it. Let's put your heart in it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And and, and part of it as well, I guess, was um, what would other people think of me? Mm. And it's kind of that, that fear as well. And it's Which is a fear for everybody, Graham, yeah. isn't it? But, but it's, people. yeah, for me, I think it was just that trust um in i guess i didn't fully trust um but that was that was the for me when it when it really started i suppose um and just kind of built on from there so that that's when i shortly after that moved to we moved here um and started going to the church we both go to um and it's just grown from there so when when i first joined that church i started to get more involved in the church i started i think church is important um i don't think you can really do church alone oh sorry your faith alone i think you do it's important to have that around you and um just to support any kind of questions that kind of thing um but there's going to be a lot of people graham who feel alone mm. there's going to be a lot of people listening to these podcasts who are going to think to themselves well do you know what everyone around me is just going to laugh at me if i if i say my true feelings and you know i, I would probably say i guarantee that those people that you probably think like that have got questions yeah in their hearts as well um but so for those people who do sort of feel alone and, and you're and they say well right now all i can do is, is worship alone what advice would you give to those people so i i do think worshiping alone is still important so when you're alone um you can still you can still pray to christ you can still pray um but i would say that for anyone who's not been to church i think that it can it might feel as though there are some preconceptions that mm. oh church is church is full of these people that acted this way and, and they're so superior perhaps um but in reality i think we build this picture up on our head of why we don't want to do something and we kind of make excuses for ourselves to not do something uh, and maybe we'll create this fear for not wanting to go um and that is just kind of holding us back if if we want to go then just do it um and and at least our, i'm sure all churches are very similar to ours um it's just full of very welcoming 
people. And there's usually like even somebody on the door, isn't there, welcoming yeah. you. So that that's their job. There is a specific like job to do that. So it's almost like if you want to go and you want to give it a go, I, I, I always say, you know, take and I am meet I do, you know, meet people, interview people who just church isn't necessarily right for them. And but you but the thing is taking a deep breath and going in and saying, Hi, I'm you know, hi, I'm Elliot. Um, this is my first time here. You know, you you might be surprised by the response. And and I don't think that so so when you go to church, you, you're not the rounded Christian that's perfect. So you don't think as, that you need to be some perfect Christian, some perfect person to go to church to fit in. Is there such a thing? No. Uh, you know, I don't know if it's Jesus, but I mean, yeah, you know. So we, we, we all come from different types of understanding of faith at different levels. And when I, 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 when I was young, I read, I was given this Bible um, from my, grandparents and it was the children's 365 days or, or stories and you could read one a day and I'm actually reading that to my children and that was my level of bible understanding mm. so when I came to Christ in 2014 it was still that <laughs> so since then I've, I've started to do more bible reading um I guess for for me one of the things that's been really useful is um starting to get into a bit of apologetics um so this um justin briley's unbelievable has been oh yeah it's good podcast but good podcast i've, I've been yeah. that's that's helped me a lot understand what i said before was but justin's i know justin and he's, he's a great guy yeah. um i produced uh um produced him actually uh in front of the mic before and he's he, he's a wonderful guy but what what he does is he allows you to um look at things from a wider kind of spectrum as well yeah which i think is great and so what i was saying before challenging yourself i think stuff like apologetics is a really good way to get a good grounding mm. in your faith because it's so easy to put the straw man of your faith up and go yep christ i trust um great at the end um but y you need to challenge anything any kind of doubts any kind of questions that um you may have and apologetics is i guess one way of doing that do you, I, I agree with that completely. Do you, do you know something that's popped into my head? So I'm just going to say it because, you know, that's sort of my role in here. You know, like I'm just going, I say, say my thoughts and then people can, because I'm getting educated like every week, you know, with these, with these conversations, which, I'm, mm. I'm, which is great. Um, but you know, you're saying about like the, the children's Bible, the young Bible, mm. whether it's written in like a big story written in like two paragraphs or whether it's written like in the, the one of the translations, which goes on for ages. The bottom line is that the the moral, that the the principle, the learning is the same. And if somebody does have a hard time picking up this big wad book, I know I do. Mm, I mean, I listen mm. to it on audio. I listen to the Bible on audio book or app. But I do have my Bible. I flick up, you know, uh, open as well. But you know, I I think actually that might be a good starting point one of the children's bibles may yeah. be a good starting point yeah, yeah. for an adult looking just to step in and they can read the story in a more approach in more um i want to say it's kind of approachable inviting way mm. um and then go actually you know what, that one resonates with me i'm going to go and get the the full version online well yeah and i think you're right because looking at the bible it's it's a huge huge book um and can it can seem a bit daunting um I, I have the app on my phone if i ever want to just refer to something rather than you can just search for stuff and yeah. it's so easy um the bible gateway app is the one oh, yeah I the use. bible gateway yeah yeah i have like a u version yeah 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 it's so easy to use and you can just search for oh yeah found it, rather than go oh where is that in the well let's talk scripture so i've asked mm. you to bring uh something with you today uh <clears throat> yeah. to read to us what scripture did you bring with you and why did you choose this one so um, I brought the prodigal son or, or the lost the lost son. And I do hope that lots of people bring this story. Um, yeah. Yeah, go on. Okay. Do why, did, why, did you, why did you choose it, first of all? Do you mind if I read it first? Yeah, and, and then and then And then tell you afterwards. Please do, please. Um, so the parable of the lost son. So there's a man who had two sons. Um, the younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. 
Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. He spent every penny. Mm. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country, who sent him to his field to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said, the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate for this Son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. So uh, this is this is about forgiveness. Um, it's about sin and it's about forgiveness. Um, and it's particularly important to me because I feel as though in my faith, um, when I well before I was coming to faith, I, I was finding my way, and I think we all do. We all, we all need to find our way in a different way. So when I moved away, I went to university um, and, I, as like I said, I wasn't going to church, wasn't doing any of those things. Um, my parents would communicate to me just you know, on the phone and my mum at the end of the phone call would say, I love you, and I'd say, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and something was, I guess, holding me back from saying that back. And I wanted to, but I thought, oh, no, I can't. Because I, now you stopped for a little while. Yeah. It feels a bit weird to start yeah, saying it right, again. Right. Um, and there was definitely something holding me back. And um, so when, like, I, I just couldn't, I, years and years went past and I, I, I wanted to say something, but I, I thought it feels like something now is going to be a big thing if I say it. So, But when I started going to church and I came to Christ in 2014 and I, and I started to get more, get more engaged with my faith, I suppose, um, one day, went over to see my parents, gave them a hug and said but to both of them, I love you. And it just felt like a relief. And actually, I'm not being held back from that anymore. And and that's why this passage is important to me. Yeah. And isn't it amazing to, to think, you know, when he, you know, in the story, the son returns and I can just imagine in the distance, you know, he's just there and the, the dad's looking out in the distance and just sees his son and the overwhelming joy mm. of seeing him. And and that's like what God's doing for us, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like at any time, it doesn't matter if your sins, it doesn't matter what you're doing, what you've gone through, what you think is really, really bad. There is forgiveness waiting. If you can, forgive, if you can mm. ask for forgiveness and it's from the heart, God is just waiting Yeah, and saying, you know, you're home. Yeah. Let's let's celebrate. Exactly. You know, let's let's be together. And he is like, I, I truly believe that. You know, it's like every day I, you know, invite the Holy Spirit down and you feel it. You you, you mm. feel it. You know, mm. I think it's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, well, we've now come uh to What, what does, does it mean? mean? I really don't have a clue. It's now come to, what does it mean? Did you like that? I loved that. That was really good. Every week we explore words which may pop up in conversation. It might be a bit of a barrier, you know, something mm. because we're thinking, I don't really know what that means or I don't really know how to talk about it. Goodness me. There are certainly words that popped up that I just don't have a clue. And I'm sort of like, you can tell because like I'm sort of listening really intently, like, oh, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Tell me. Um, I think this is a, a, it's an easy word, but, probably one of the most difficult words mm. that you've got because um, 
simply because it's a word that's used so quickly mm. and so easily. And it said, you know, this has been forgiven and you have mm. this, so this is forgiven. And you're like, what does that mean? Am I really held accountable to this, et cetera? What does the word sin mean so to you? I, I would just preface this with I'm not a scholar I'm not a vicar I'm not somebody who's been to theology school or anything like that but this which is... I have to say I think will give a be- in mm. many ways a better answer yeah. because just a human answer is all we're looking for so so my view of of sin I, I guess if I could get a good deed from you what would you say is a good deed are you asking me questions? Uh, That's yeah. not how this works. <laughs> That's it's only not fair. How, no, because I I don't have any. A good a good deed. Okay, so a good deed would be that I have gone to ASDA, and I'm doing my shopping, and the people in front of me. There's a someone in front of me, and they've got two kids, and the kids are screaming and kicking <laughs> around. And I say, do you know what? I will pack your shopping for you. Oh, it's lovely. So um, that's a good deed. How did that make you feel? I was smiling. I think it would. I I think yeah. I I've, what I'm actually thinking would be even better is if I got my card out and paid for it as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, it it feels great. You know, it feels great helping people. So that's that's it. The reason I'm asking you this question is because uh, sin isn't just sin equals this done. I think it takes a bit of unpacking, and and you can't really have sin without God, because God is not sin god is separate from sin um so we need to just explain what is good what is bad what's a good thing to do and and if you ever do a something that's bad afterwards once you maybe calm down think oh god that that, that makes you feel rich re- in the moment you feel yeah, awful right, right yeah so that, that that's that how it feels so the effect of sin um one thing actually i want to talk about before the kind of that effect of sin is, is i won't go into this because it's probably a rabbit hole we'll go down but um we all have choice. We all have free will. We can choose in the moment what to do. And it may be really difficult sometimes to go, do you know what? I'm not going to react to that. I'm not going to argue with my spouse or I'm not going to shout at this person who, I don't know. Road rage. Road rage, yeah. yeah. Horn on in the car or something. Um, so we all have that choice. So we can choose to do good and we can choose to do something that's bad. And if you take the kind of the two extremes, you might have somebody who's, I don't know, maybe they've, they've murdered somebody or, or whatever. Um, the, the more bad you do, you become, in my opinion, you become what you do. Um, and, and so if you keep doing good things, again, this is back to God. If without God, what's the point of sin? I mean, what's the point of all of it? Um, and it's what you become. So... I believe that I have a soul and uh, Jesus once said um, it's not it's not what goes into our bodies it's what come what we do what comes out of our mouths what we do and that affects us so I think I think that choice we have is so important because it allows us to choose God uh, and so God is God is good uh, and Sin is essentially the opposite. I, I, I love, I think there's so much in what you said when you said, you know, you, you become, you know, what you do. Is mm. that how you phrased it? Yeah. You become what you do. So what you're effectively saying is that if you choose because of the free will mm. to live in the light, you know, if we just mm. go a little bit kind of Star Wars for a minute, right? And you choose the Jedi route, you know, and you you become like sort of one with nature, etc. If you choose to work with God, you mm. choose to do good deeds, you choose to have good conversation, you choose like good things coming out of your mouth, then eventually when something like road rage happens, mm. Mm. it gets a bit easier exactly to handle that because you can triumph with the light over that because you've got so much light you can kind of consume the darkness. Is that what you're yeah, saying? I, so, I, and I would say that, at least for me, it feels as though you're on this kind of spectrum. Mm. Um, and the more good deeds... And it's, it's not comfortable to do something good. So just imagine, uh, okay, for example, you might have... You might, you might see somebody walk past somebody, they're homeless, they're struggling, they're cold, they're hungry. How does that make you feel? 
Mm. So that, do you think, oh, I should help them, but I'm not going to because it, it's outside my comfort zone. I really don't feel happy with that. I'm not going to bother. What's the worst that happened to be? Nothing. I'll just carry on walking. Um, but do you know what? That uh, yeah. person w- makes such a difference to them to just have have your time and have, even if it's just a, a drink, a sandwich, and it, it's not even just the food, it's the, the I, thought. Yeah, I have a bit of torment with this because I, I, I give whenever I can. And I, I always, I always sort of get pulled to the, the story of, of um, the widow who, when they're giving their offerings to the temple mm. and lots of wealthy people were giving loads of money, but she gave everything. She yeah. gave like the two coins mm-hmm. and that's all she had. So Jesus basically said, you know, she has given more than everyone here. And, you know, you, so sometimes, and I try to justify it and, and you know, you know, I, even now I just feel like this is wrong in many ways. Like, so I open up my wallet and mm. I, I get like, and I don't know what people don't really carry cash now, but no. I've got coins or things like that. I just try and say, you know, grab it all and just give that. And I think right, I'm giving everything. Mm. But then I'm like, but I'm not because, you know, I could go to the cash point and mm-hmm. draw out a tenner and you think, well, actually I could draw out, well, I could actually draw out 20 quid, you know, but then there is that, what I loved what you said is that, are we actually looking to make ourselves feel better by giving a tenner or could we meet on an emotional spiritual level by having a conversation yeah i think it's think think it's i wouldn't say it's so much about making ourselves feel better it's about doing the right thing which makes us better uh nice i like that graham yeah. i like that um and the person that you're giving your doing this for that if we stick with the, the homeless person then i mean that they greatly value that I could well. give a, a real life com, uh, a real life example, mm-hmm. which happened a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. So you know the Asda near us. That's yep. where I get my fuel. Yeah. And um, as I was driving out, there are two exits, aren't there? There's, I was on yep. the right hand side. Yeah. As I pulled up, I was I looked on the left and I saw a lady who was in the booth taking the money and the on the other one had shoulders really shaking, head mm. and hands, and I suddenly thought she is crying her eyes out, and then she. Um, looked, looked. Um, she looked up at the person serving, and then she said, and they could see she was upset. Mm. She sort of pulled it together, shaking, served them. They drove off, and then head in the hand. Next person came, and these people were just driving off. And I, I had a choice, Mm-mm. and then I needed to go. Yeah, and I just went. Everyone can wait for me. I don't mind if they get across me for a bit. I just stopped the car, and I looked, and I, I looked at the guy, and I said, "Mate, I'll pay you in a minute." your colleague needs some help right now. Mm. And he was like, well, and, and obviously he would have seen it. He was right opposite mm. this person, okay? But no one made that choice. And I went round and I just said, excuse me, now the, la- the lady in the car who she was serving jumped a mile of what I was going to attack her. <laughs> you know, li- literally that's what it felt like. And I just said to the lady, I said, excuse me, are you okay? Mm. And she was serving this lady. The lady just took the car and drove off. That was her choice. But she literally because she was upset. She's going, I've got to go. I, I, I've, I've got to go. I need someone to relieve me. I've got to go. So I said, who, who can I call? Mm. How can I help you? Who can, who can you call? She goes, I'm trying to call someone. Trying to call someone. I said, right. I will be right back. Mm. And I went around to the guy. I said, look, mate. I said, your colleague here. She needs some help. Can that you got a phone there? Does that connect to the, the, the shop? And uh, he was like, yeah. I said, can you just call them and tell someone just to come out and, and let her go? Because mm. whatever it is. She's got to go, mm. right? That's no good, you know. So what I did was I went round to her before I left and I just took the cross off my neck. Mm. I just put it down in front of her and I just said, everything's going to be all right. I'll take this. And she was like, no, no, no. I said, no, just take it. Just take it, you know. Just take it. I don't want it. It's yours. And I said, but everything will be okay. I know it's bad now, mm. but it will be okay. Anyway, so... She, I just went in my car, drove off, drove off thinking I should have done more. I won't lie. But the what happened, what I did see before I went was the car behind who saw what's happening stopped. And that lady, and I saw the compassion in her eyes, yeah. started talking to this lady. And I like to think that maybe that triggered that, maybe that conversation, mm-hmm. and that she would have better words than I was saying and failing at, you know? And with the the cross, I hope that she does carry that with her. Yeah. And hopefully maybe one day even pass it on to someone else. 
it, I guess that first step is always the hardest. Very hard. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very hard. Yeah. I, I never used to stop for that people might be homeless and because I used to think, oh, it's definitely outside my comfort zone. I didn't used to do that. Mm. And I do now. I mean, um, even now you're lowering your voice when you say it. Yeah. Because you're, you're a sensitive subject. You, you, yeah. you, you know, it's, it's like we just need to say, you know, they're homeless. I'm going to go and I'm going to start and I'm just going to say hello. Yeah. You know, and that first step, I think you're right. And that's not just the first step in helping someone. It's the first step in helping yourself. It's the first step in just saying, God, I don't know how to pray. I've never prayed. Mm. But I just want to acknowledge you. Mm -hmm. If you're there, I'm willing. Yeah. The first step. Oh, yeah, absolutely. First step. Absolutely. You know. And going back to be me being a christian on paper right i'd always go yeah that's a god and uh, yeah i'm doing the right thing but for me in 2014 that was my i guess my first real step so where where have you seen god working so recently i, I suppose i mean i don't have to look very far elliot um okay. so i mean the podcast you're doing i think is oh, fantastic me? oh blimey um oh, I, thanks man all the stuff that you're doing i think you're you're doing god's work and i think it's it's fantastic that you're doing this podcast as well. Um, so, yeah, I definitely, I, I don't have to look very far. I, I, I really appreciate that. But I, I, I kind of want to say now, as you know, I, I work heavily in, in um, rec- producing and mm. audio, recording audiobooks and uh, and uh, podcasting and stuff. And um, we, we do an awful lot of Christian books, which yeah. is just wonderful. But I truly believe that I was, I was told to do this. I mm. truly believe that this is something I was told to do and doing but it's it's uh i want to make it quite clear that the the outskirts faith podcast isn't about this side of things it's just about the conversation that that you're getting that that we're getting from like people like yourself and all the other guests who come on and it's about the the outskirts faith podcast is about the the Mm. listeners listening you know yeah and uh but i I want (laughs) you to know that i really value that thank you that means a lot that's okay um <laughs> <laughs> that's all right moving on <laughs> you're welcome um so actually just last week yeah. i was at um am i allowed to say shop names is that allowed you, you can say shop names yeah so i was at ikea oh you're not allowed to say ikea <laughs> <laughs> i was at a big swedish brand that's got a what yeah okay in in uh, southampton yeah that one yeah, yeah. so i was uh, i'd had to go right to the other top. ikeas available <laughs> I had to I had to park right at the top, which I hate parking at the top because there's lots of lifts and whatever. But I had to; it was the only space uh, to go. And um, I was getting this. Basically, it was a top of a desk, so a big wooden panel. And um, when I came out with all my things, and I didn't have any bags and stuff, I just kind of stupidly just dump it all down. Okay, that'll be fine. I came out onto this rooftop, and it was very windy. I started going out, and the trolley oh was going goodness. everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like a, it's like a sail, basically. It's taking everything everywhere, and things are f- literally something flew off down the end of the ro- down at the end of the car park. I was like, uh, right, reverse, <laughs> try and keep everything together. Immediately, two people came and helped me, and a third person came up with the thing that's flown off. Love it, and they, they made a choice. Yeah, yeah, they made a choice. They made a choice, and. I, I just thank God for those people because I was I def, definitely needed help, and I think God kind of helps us when we need it. Yeah, right. I mean, we don't we don't always get it when we pray for it. When we say, "Oh, can I have X?" Well, I mean, God knows what we need in yeah. that time, right? And, and there's a few times that has happened, and and, and I think kind of my coming to faith. It, mm. Yes, there was a a turning point. I can say that was 2014, but there's been lots of things snippets that go okay that yeah i've made note of that um lots of i i guess small things that have add to my faith that 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 make it stronger i suppose um and i i guess i also would say that when we pray it's not always just about um wanting things it's about being grateful so i'm i'm grateful for you know, having a family having a wonderful family and mm. and having a roof over my head and be able to pay the bills uh, i'm just so grateful because everything's so much harder now as well um, yeah yeah so yeah that, that's where i've seen god working i love that within this podcast w- what's popped up is the 
the whole point of making a choice. Yeah. I like that. There's been a there's been a few instances like that. I love that it wasn't one person who made a choice. It wasn't two, but it was actually three people who made a choice to come and help you. Personally, I would have just started blowing in your direction and try to make the wind more just to see what would happen. Yeah. Uh, but that's just me and, and, and you there. But isn't it isn't it wonderful? Yeah. That that happened. Yeah. Okay. I, I, it, it shows you that, you know, they're doing a good thing. Um, and that's helping them. It's also helping me as well. So when we do something good, mm. it does actually change us. That, that grows us. Which does go back to what you were saying earlier on, that you become what you do. Yeah. Yeah. And and when we do something wrong, I mean, the the whole reason we would go to church, we would say sorry uh, to God, is to make us right with God. So I guess just imagine your relationship um, with your children. Um, they do something wrong, they squabble, um, and when they've calmed down, they might apologise to each other, and then they apologise to you, and, they, and you're healing your relationship mm. with your family. Uh, and that's why we do that with God. It's not just to give a bit of understanding as to, what, you know, what's this whole worship thing about? Well, we're making ourselves right with God. Wonderful. Which leads us straight into... Splat! The gnat! <laughs> so... <laughs> I thought you'd appreciate those sound effects because, um, yeah, you and I would just appreciate silly things like that. Um, okay, splat the gnat. So the whole point of this is that, you know, things that stop us in our everyday life, things that get in our way, negativity, evil, all, all these things that can just get in the way. And sometimes it can just, not everybody, but sometimes it can just drag us down and, and it stops us being the best person we can be um, in that day, you know, and it will help us it might stop us from making a good first choice mm -hmm. you know but we can take it we can you know in the name of jesus we can take that and we can give that to to god and that's not going to go anywhere it's not disappearing but it, what it does do is it helps us clear god will take that from us we can help clear our heads carry on with our day and work with god to deal with that issue mm. and with so many big and tiny issues in the world um if you could splat something and hand that to God, what would it be? What would you splat? I, I think for me, homelessness is, we've already talked about it, that, that's quite a close one to me because it doesn't feel right that we live in this society where we're happy to walk around other people who have nothing, um, which may be from no fault of their own. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I, I know lots is being done, um, but yeah, that that's still, that's just, that doesn't sit right with me. So... I, I'm actually with you on this one. And uh, I think that it's funny because a lot of people might say, well, how can there be homelessness in the world? Mm. If there's God, how can there be homelessness in the world? Well, actually, there is because that that happens. Mm. However, we can pray for the homeless. Mm. But would it actually be better if we prayed for all the people who could make a difference? <clears throat> all the people who could make a difference for the homeless. Yeah. So, yes, there's homeless in the world, but the, the truth is that we do actually, if you think of money which is discarded every year, and, and I know there's a lot of things that need finance and attention, mm. but actually the tools to help, you know, like what about those wonderful people who are helping um feed the homeless and shelter the homeless mm -hmm. and the wonderful charities are out there and christian aid and and all the other wonderful work that's going on out there you know like god is working with those people yep. to help the homeless and wouldn't it be great to pray for them just to expand yeah uh, and help that absolutely i i, I guess um suffering I, do you know what i think suffering is something that is an obstacle for people to come to faith. I think it's one of the big kind of obstacles. Can I tell a kind of a little, very quick story? Tell as many stories as you want. So this is something I heard, um, which I thought that fits really well, which kind of is a little kind of nugget of, oh, yeah, that kind of makes sense. So um, so man's getting a haircut uh, at the barber's, um, and you're saying, you're having a conversation, oh, there can't be any God because, you know, there's suffering in the world. Mm. Um and you know, the man pays, pays his haircut, um, goes outside, and um, 
comes across somebody who's homeless, actually. Um, and he, he brings this homeless man in to get his hair cut. The kind Is this a true do. story? No. No, okay. All right. I just so want just to know the, where I'm at with this. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it just kind of helps to explain. So, uh, and the guy takes this homeless person in to get a haircut. It's a kind thing to do. Okay. Um, and, and the guy comes in and says, look at this man. There's, there's no barbers in the world. Because look, he's got terrible hair. And he said, yeah, the barber, the barber says, there are barbers. He just didn't come to me. So, you know, you can't say there's no God. And you need to go to God. And, and the answers come. Okay, so for me, I mean, for me, I didn't come from a point of their suffering in the world, and that was an obstacle for me, but I think it is for a lot of people. Um, and a lot of people try to, to to kind of put God under the microscope and go, yeah, okay, so A equals Z, so yeah, God exists. Yeah, and It doesn't work like that. You need to come to God and then you get the answers. I feel like I'm just screaming as I hear it so clearly, like just first choices. Yeah, make a good first choice. Make a good first choice, and just and just do that. So I, you know, I I put the challenge out to you uh, listening today. What are you going to do when you get the choice? If you've got a choice to do something good, mm. why don't you take that? Why don't you take that? Do it. See how you feel, and then just say it to God. Just say, God, I've done that. And um, doing it in your name, yeah, and just see what happens. So let's, uh, and of course, you know, it does take us to, uh, you know, love your neighbor, right? Yeah, love your neighbor, and and I'm gonna get this terribly wrong Go in on. the wording, but yeah, Jesus said, "When you help the least of my brothers, you helped me." Nice, nice. Okay, great. So we're now going to uh, move on to like a little um, quick fire round. Here, oh my okay? goodness. <laughs> So there's uh, three three questions, and um, this isn't about can you get them all right, really. Can it's, I get them all wrong? Yeah, of course yes. you can. Of course you can. Like I've I've had this. I've gone on some apps to like pinch some of these questions. This isn't like oh I'm just going to dive into my head and I you know let's just pick one of these <laughs> million questions. No, it's not that. I you know I'd research these. Yeah, you know, some of the stuff I know, some of the stuff you'll know. And a lot of it, you know, I don't know. So we're all learning together. But it enables us to move on and have conversation yeah. should this stuff pop up, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll ask you the question. You'll hear something uh, whilst you're having an opportunity to think about it and then give your answer when the, okay. when the sound stops, okay? Okay, so Graham Shankland, for your first question, what trait did Solomon, King Solomon, right, what did he pray for from God when he became king? Loving the music, aren't you? No, it's really off putting it. Yeah, that's the whole point. To be five minutes. What trait did Solomon pray for from God when he became king? Wisdom. Wisdom! Hang on, I've got a sound effect for that. <laughs> I don't always use it. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't think you were going to have to use that, did you? I didn't I think you were going to have to use that. There. Yeah, my finger was nowhere near it. Um, <laughs> so Solomon prayed to God saying, Give your servant an understanding mind able to discern the difference between good and evil. And God gave him a wise and discerning mind. Yes, wisdom is the ability to discern between right and wrong, which means right and wrong are real. Good and evil exist. Yeah. And that that's, for me, that's really something that kind of, I think lots of people struggle with as well. I think it's, oh, it's just an opinion. Yeah, it, yeah. No, there is really a right and there is really a wrong. And that's what we started with. I good and evil do exist yeah i i co-hosted a couple of seasons of um sunil raheja's podcast um dancing with wisdom mm. uh, he invited me on to do it with him it's not my podcast at all you know it's all him he's, he's he's great um but he interviewed loads of different people before that i was just lucky to be invited to sort of co-host that for a couple of episodes um and it's all he mentioned solomon a lot Mm. And talks about the importance of wisdom, but then again, I literally just want to keep going back to that first choice. Have you got the wisdom to to say that's good? I'm I'm gonna do that. I want to say like, act on it. Yeah, look for the good and act yeah. on it. Wonderful. Okay, question number two. All right, <clears throat> so I'm I'm sticking I'm sticking with Solomon. Okay, oh, how many? <laughs> say a prayer now. How many wives did Solomon have? How many wives? 
did Solomon have? <laughs> Your face. <laughs> <laughs> One? I'll give you a clue. It's in the hundreds. No. Yes, sir. Uh, I, you're going to have to tell me this like one. 700 wives, 300 concubines. That's greedy, isn't it? It's just greedy. <laughs> Who needs that much? Think about the marriage costs. Oh, dear. You know, I thought, you know, is that wise? <laughs> that's <laughs> not, yeah. You know, that's not wise. Okay, but uh, if I'm not mistaken, I'm, I'm, I'm not 100% clued up, you know, with all the scripture on here, but he did uh, turn, turn from God in the end of Solomon. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken. Okay, all right. Uh, here's one. Um, which human author wrote the most books in the Bible? So in the Bible, which human author wrote the most books? I, I want to say Paul. It's Paul! Yeah. It's, hang on. Hey! <laughs> this is our live studio audience. <laughs> I like to do with. Jeff, you know, I just like pushing buttons. Do you know what? I'm happy with two out of three if that's the last one. I, I think it's great. That's absolutely great. So, um, yeah, absolutely. 13. Oh, fantastic. 13 books. There you go. Um, Graham Shankland, I have loved today. Um, Me too. You are a good friend. And, you um, are as well. Thank you. Thank you. And I love the time that we spend together. But I actually think this is the first time we've been able just to have a conversation on this level like we we talk mm, about it a lot mm, mm. but never been able to sort of unpack it and i what i what i'm going to take away from today is about the first that first choice and, and choosing the, the the first option of good mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i hope everyone does the same graham i do invite everyone it, it can be quick it can be as long as you want whether just to ask you if you wouldn't mind just closing with just a, a short prayer and then i will just finish off i'll just join in and finish off at the end if that's okay with you yeah happy to do that great when when you're ready graham lord jesus we just pray that when we make when those decisions those cho choices are in front of us that we have the conviction to to do that right thing we mm. have the conviction to the courage to just step forward and and do that right thing that's right just pray that you'll you'll be with us in those choices in those moments in Jesus' name. Amen. And Father, I just jump on that as well, that uh, when when people have got a choice to make and when they see people in need, when they see, when when they're talking to each other or a stranger or, you know, loved ones, that rather than reacting, and we're all guilty for that, I'm, I'm certainly one of them, but for them to feel your presence, to feel the Holy Spirit, that they may stop and just listen before speaking and give people the compassion that they deserve in your name. And Lord, I pray for everyone listening to this today and that they may be able to make good choices, first, second, third, but that initial response that they can make a good choice and, and choose goodness today. And by choosing that goodness, they are taking one step closer to you. So in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you to Graham Shankland and thank you for you for listening today. It's been uh, wonderful having you join us. And uh, I hope you've taken something from this. Do make sure that you uh, join us um, on our social media channels on TikTok and Instagram, YouTube, etc., uh, Facebook and all that. Um, and uh, make sure that you use hashtag oof. Can you say that for me? Hashtag oof. It's something quite nice about saying that, isn't it? I do love that Double word. O F, hashtag oof. So thank you for joining us on the Outskirts of Faith podcast. We'll see you again. Thank you. You've been listening to the Outskirts of Faith podcast. We would love more people to join our community. So please subscribe, share this podcast and join us on our social media. And of course, you can visit our resource website at outskirtsoffaith.com. This podcast was edited by Chris Byland, the YouTube video editing by Adam Moss, music by Matthew Salvage and hosted by Elliot Frisbee. The Outskirts of